It's not every day that an engineering sample pre-production unit shows up at my office, but this is the Husky Lens. And if you're not familiar, the Husky Lens is an AI project that was on Kickstarter through a company called DF Robot, and it is based on the awesome K210 RISC-V CPU. And if you're not familiar with that CPU, you will be, because it is in a ton of artificial intelligence uh, projects that are coming out, and it is a very, very cool CPU, and these people found a very, very cool use for it. And so basically what they've done is they've strapped a camera, some buttons, a little rocker switch, uh, serial out, USB, which can be used for firmware flashing and um, and power, and a nice screen. Now, I've been talking to the people from DF Robot for the last couple of months and following this project, and it is very cool to watch it go from concept to reality, and they were so nice to send me one of their pre-production versions. Now, again, because this is pre-production, you can't really completely judge it by what you're going to see, but it gives you an idea of just how awesome this can be. So let's power it up. I'm going to power it up with a battery first before we get into any of the programming or the coding or whatever. So you, pro you power it up and you'll get the little Husky lens screen and it boots really quickly. And uh, I'm going to try to get the lighting right. I'm not used to shooting this close, but basically there's a rocker menu over here. And it has things such as face detection, object tracking, object recognition, line tracking, color recognition, tag recognition, which is for, um, it only works on smaller QR codes, but it does work on QR codes. And then there's some general settings, which actually aren't even filled out yet, because not only am I on pre-production hardware, but I'm on pre-production software. Okay, so I have a couple of pieces of felt here, and I'm going to put them kind of in the middle. Uh, where hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'm trying to keep everything fairly zoomed in, uh, but basically I think the best thing to do would be for me to turn on some more light. I'm going to try to keep the glare off of the screen, but if you can't really tell, this is yellow and this is orange. And so I have the Husky lens here, and I'm going to go over to the orange, and I'm going to push the little menu that's going to tell me color recognition, and I'm going to click this button on the right, and it has detected the orange. So you'll be able to see that as I move the camera down, that box is trying not to jump over to the yellow. And then as I come back over here and get more to a clear um, bunch of orange, now this is felt, and so it's got some dark spots and some light spots. But the idea is that it is clearly distinguishing between the orange and the yellow, and that dot does not want to jump over there to the yellow. So I think that's pretty sweet. Again, I'm sure the algorithms will get tweaked over time, but it is, uh, and I probably would have been better off with something that was super solid, but this, uh, this just gives you an idea, even in an imperfect environment, it's able to detect the difference between the colors. Now, while I'm still zoomed in, I'm going to try to turn off the uh, crazy overhead light, and I'm gonna slide a phone in here. We're going to look at this thing's object recognition mode. And so you'll see that as I'm on here and I'm hovering over this, it's giving you the percentage that it thinks that that's a dog. <laughs> it goes back and forth between cow and dog on that one. Maybe if I get out a little bit there, it thinks that's a dog. Again, we're on very early software, um, but dog thinks that one's a person. Uh, but it's trying, and we'll get in here to cat. It you know goes back and forth whether it thinks that's a cat or a dog. Uh, and then we'll come in here to a horse. And you can see uh, it thinks that that's a horse, thinks that one's a dog. Uh, let's see, it thinks that's a horse. We'll go in here to a person, take Sarah Jessica Parker, person, cow, <laughs> cow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, I mean, it generally thinks she's a person. Uh, and then we'll go to, uh, this is kind of interesting. So let's look here at the face recognition. So we're gonna go to uh, face recognition and I'm gonna click this. And what's interesting is you come in here and you'll see that even on a blurry one, it detects a face, uh, detects a face, detects a face. And uh, as you scroll in here, you'll see that on this one, it's able to differentiate. Every once in a while, it'll catch on the other one, but for the most part, it's able to differentiate between that human face and the cartoon face, which I think is, is pretty cool. 
So this next part is a little hard to film, but I want to show it to you anyway. Uh, it's the object tracking mode. So I can take an object like this and put it in front of the Husky lens, push the button, and basically put the target on whatever I want to track. And then I click this button and then it turns that box green and basically it's going to follow it around the screen. And even if it leaves the field of view, when it comes back in, it usually can pick it back up and detect that the object is still there. And so, I mean, very, very, very cool. And you can program multiple objects and multiple faces and all that kind of stuff. So this stuff is all good. And I mean, it's great that you can have a camera that can recognize this, but the question is, what do you do with it when you recognize it? So let's check that out. So I showed you some stuff over on the bench, just some basics of how this thing works. And that's really awesome. Um, but what's really cool is that this thing is actually outputting all of this data. Now, there's no libraries for this thing. There's no interface for this thing. This is pre-production hardware. But what's very cool is that they made their own protocol that basically puts out all this random information. But it's not really random because you're getting the coordinates of that object that was found and the height and the width and if it's a learned object you're getting what object number it is and and all of that stuff is just flowing out into this so what i've done is i have taken this husky lens and hooked the serial port up to an arduino and i'm using that to do a little bit of parsing and then i'm just sending it to node red on my pc and so if you come over here to node red you'll see that nothing's happening i have a throttle node in here that's only allowing something every two seconds just because i'm not trying to flood the thing with data um, but basically i can come over here and i will tell it to do some object tracking and then all of a sudden you'll see that this thing starts spitting out data and what i've learned is that when this has ffs at the end over here there's no object found but if it doesn't have FFs, then it found the object. So you'll see that now there's numbers in there and it's it's able to read object number one. And that's why you always see a one down there toward the end. So we have this flow of data coming into the thing. And um, again, I expect there to be libraries to parse that stuff. And they, they don't expect you to write all your own libraries. But I was able to write a pretty simple algorithm that could come in here and see if my object was detected so right now you'll see that it says not detected and i will make sure that it can find the object i'll put it in front of it and tell it to detect and it should detect yep it detected the object and uh, what's cool is it's still getting all that information if you look over here on this thing you know you're still getting coordinates and size and so you can write very complicated algorithms that say if you see my object in this coordinated let's say you know let's say it's a cat door if you see my cat in this ob in this area then open up the cat door you know, stuff like that if it's a skunk do not open the cat door that kind of stuff very very fun stuff um that you can do with this so i want to thank the husky lens people at df robot for sending me this pre-production version and there might be some contest stuff going on in the facebook group so keep an eye out for that Thanks for watching.